Okay, so my wife's looking for the record. You got it. Okay, we are on. This is Brother Dan Jordan, God's Found Jubilee Ministries, coming to you live from uh, uh, Elizabethton, Tennessee. And I have with me the, the assistant pastor of the church, Community Fellowship Community Church yep. in uh, Watauga, Watauga, Tennessee, about 15 minutes from Johnson City area. And we just did our first uh, prophecy conference with the new book, as you know, my new book just came out just days ago. In fact, many of you are waiting on yours, and I don't have them yet. I'm waiting for the uh, publisher to ship them to my house so I can ship them to you. Uh, we had one case shipped here to the conference. Uh, got here Thursday or Friday, and the conference started Sunday. Uh, seven clocks are ticking. And I am starting, I just kicked off my brand new tour. The seven clocks are ticking book and prophecy tour started right here at my good friend Phil Hauser's church. Brother Phil, it's awfully kind of you to let us come here and start the tour here. I couldn't think of a better guy or a better place to start the tour than right here. It just happened to work out this way. And uh, Brother Phil Hauser, some of you out there would recognize Brother Phil because <clears throat> he sometimes does security at, at our meetings. And uh, he's been to New York with us. He's been to Minnesota. And I don't know where else, but uh, he's gone to Israel with us. And and wasn't much of a bodyguard in Israel, though. He wasn't armed in Israel. <laughs> but, uh, but no, we had a good time in Israel last year. So, Brother Phil is the assistant pastor. Your dad is the pastor of the church. Yes, and your dad's sir. name is? Ken. Ken Hauser. And uh, we appreciate them. I've preached at your church here several times. And uh, Brother Phil actually has something in the book. And uh, I thought in just a minute we might talk a little bit about, sure. about that little piece. Uh, because Brother Phil wants to get in on this. He's, he's got his name in the book. So we're going to... Now he, uh, he came up with something pretty interesting that, we're gonna, that I put in the book. And we're going to share it with you in just a second. But first of all, Brother Phil, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your church, how long you've been there, and what, what you do there, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Dad started that church 37 years ago, built the building from the ground up, and I've been the assistant pastor, I guess, for about four years. I do Wednesday night services, and of course, Dad's gone on vacation, so I get the whole enchilada, brother. I'm glad you were here to bail me out. So your Dad's been there 37 years, yeah. and that is almost unheard of for a pastor to be, uh, I mean, they don't last three years anymore. They're, just, they're gone. And uh, that's me. And your dad's a sweet guy, he and uh, I like him. And uh, we uh, we have a good time when, when he's here. Yeah. And but I was really tickled that we got to start the conference off here, and we had a good crowd. I think there was eighty or ninety people Sunday yes, morning. Now this is a little stick in the mud out in the middle of the woods church. There's probably only twenty people in the whole town, but. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there is a McDonald's nearby, but uh, it is. It's a small little 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 nook and cranny place here. And excuse me, I'm going to move this just a little because I want to make sure that my Facebook thing is uh, on. Okay, good. Um, so we've got uh, a few people that are watching on Facebook as we go here. And uh, huh, your wife is on, Serena. Um, let's see. Serena is watching us on Facebook. That's his wife. But she, anyway, she's supposed to be cleaning the house. She's supposed to be cleaning the house. Huh? <laughs> Why did you get cleaning the house? Really? Yeah. And that's just next door, by the way. She's liable to bust in any minute, any minute. And, and break up this little thing we got going here. <laughs> and of course, my wife is back there manning or womaning the camera for us because I forgot my remote control. As you can see, I'm not in my office. I'm out of my environment here. And I, don't, I don't know what to do. I'm out of my environment. And I don't have my clicker, and uh, I usually have my monitors. You know, you saw me have to reach over there a minute ago because we didn't. There's no plug on this wall over here, brother Phil. I wanted to plug my laptop in over here so I could see that you know Facebook is going, and I had to reach over there because there's a plug over there. So anyway, I can see us over here on the on the on the on the monitor there. So we're on Facebook Live right now. You on YouTube, you're going to see this later uh, tonight when I get her uploaded, but. Phil, uh, tell us just a little bit about what you thought about uh, the Prophecy Conference. Of course, I do PowerPoint presentations. Every every session has a PowerPoint screen, yeah. and we try to have vivid uh, things for them to see on the screen that I think helps. Um, so tell us from your perspective what what, what you thought of the, the meeting on Sunday. It, you needed to have more time. More it's time. Like, well, it's like a weekend thing, you know, yeah. like a Friday, Saturday, and we were cramming you into one hour 
You had 38 slides on one of them I in an 30, hour. 39 slides 39 last night. In an hour. And I went, I think yeah. I went more than that. I don't that's, know. I would, that's so much information. It's more like a weekend, Friday, Saturday, twice on Sunday to get, you yeah. know. I mean, a man would have to really record it or buy your book and go back. So, did you get any? I know you probably haven't talked to many of the church people. Yeah, I was just curious if you got any vibes from anybody. Did did they like it? Did they was it boring? They, did they, they, I had a couple people ask if we could do a study on Revelation because you you opened the door. I opened there. the door and I caught. Some, yep. I opened morning. the door and let let something in. Yep. So. Yep. Sunday morning you you skipped the Revelation really quick and I've already had a couple requests to do the Revelation study which takes almost a month. Well, probably you what know. they saw was all my air and they want you to correct them all, <laughs> yeah. so I beat you to that one, so yeah. you, you could have had the, you, you missed the, you missed an opportunity, but, uh, and by the way, Brother Phil has done a revelation, in fact, I have your disc, you um, yeah. I, don't have, uh, I don't have them on my website, sure, we, we need to package them up, because um, I think people would enjoy those, and uh, so, anyway, the new book is here, it's got, uh, many color pictures. There's, I think there's like 25 full color pictures in the brand new book. And I know many of you have pre-ordered the book and you don't have it yet because I don't have them yet. We got one case sent to us and uh, we sold some of them here at, yeah, the, at the church. Um, we had a couple, uh, we had several folks, four people from Facebook that follow us. Mm -hmm. um, two, two, uh, four came Sunday morning. From North Carolina. From North Carolina, Heather and Heidi and uh, George Constant. And Constance, the yeah. two children, and boy, we had a wonderful time with them. We went out to eat Saturday night, and they came with us, and yeah, it's a wonderful time of fellowship. They're sweet people, and uh, they came to a meeting in North Carolina that we did a while back, and uh, so they came. And Sunday night, we got a surprise. There was another couple, a lady and her husband, Melissa, who is also one of our Facebook folks, and Shorty. Shorty, her dad. All right, Melissa. What did I say? Husband. Oh, husband. I'm, okay, my wife's over there. The, the camera woman's back there trying <laughs> She's to instruct me. Off. <laughs> and uh, I said it wrong. Melissa and her dad. I'm sorry about that. Melissa and her dad. Uh, I asked him his name. His name is Shorty. Now, I don't know if that's slang or if that's really his name, but, but he is a sweet guy. I love that guy. And we met them back in 2014 at the Orlando Prophecy Conference and uh, got to know them and then She's been on Facebook and I didn't even realize who she was till uh, she showed up last night. They sat on the second row and I, and I said, oh, are you visitors here? She said, yeah, we were from Facebook. We, we, we met you in Orlando. I said, oh my goodness. And then I started to, started to come back to me. And uh, so they were there last night. So that was wonderful. We had some visitors from Facebook land and from our, from our ministry. And uh, so... Um, we'll keep everybody posted on where we're going next. I do want to share something with you, with, uh, with Brother Phil here, that's in the book. And uh, we gave Brother Phil credit for something, because he came up with something. Let me start it off, Brother Phil, by explaining uh, the feeding of the 5,000 sure. story. In two th uh, last year, Phil and I uh, and our wives went to Israel, and I preached on the very spot where, that they claimed the feeding of the 5,000 took place. Now, there's no way to know if it's the real spot. It uh, doesn't matter. But I preached on that spot for about 10 minutes mm -hmm. about the feeding of the 5,000. And the fact that when they, when, the, when they had all finished eating the five loaves and two fishes, I mean, think of that, five little loaves of bread and a, cu uh, and a couple of fish, when they finished eating, there was 12 baskets full of leftovers. Now, that's a miracle, obviously. But what's interesting is when you read the story is there was no fish left over that was put in the baskets. The baskets were filled with barley. And I pointed out, and I point out in my book here and in, in all the books that I've written, that the barley represents Israel. And that the, the prophetic lesson there is when the barley baskets are full, the 12 baskets, meaning the 12, 12 tribes, 12 tribes of Israel, when Israel is ready, or what we call a bib, a bib from Deuteronomy and from Exodus 12, uh, in the month a bib. In other words, a bib means to be ready for harvest. A bib means the barley is within seven to ten days of harvest time. They announce it's a bib, and they reset the calendar, and that becomes Passover month. Uh, that's how they did it in Bible days. That's how they're supposed to do it if, if you're going to do it right. Uh, they don't do that anymore. That system has not been used in hundreds and hundreds of years. And uh, basically since, since, since the cross, they haven't used that system, or at least since 70 AD when they were scattered. But 
Um, so I pointed out that the, the barley represented Israel, and when the barley ba when the baskets were full, the fish represents Christianity. Christian. Christian. Christians. So what does God? God takes the fish out. That's us. The church goes out in the rapture, and God is going to deal with Israel, the twelve baskets. So preach that in Israel. The, the folks from North Carolina, three preachers in North Carolina, were there on the on the trip. And they all got excited about that, and uh, we got to know them, and we scheduled some conferences with them, and, and uh, that's how we met uh, uh, some of these other folks. But uh, to make a long story short, Phil gets, gets a hold of that, and he's, he's my good friend. We talk every week on the phone, and, and I, when, I, when I learned about the barley, and I wrote a book about the barley, and I told him the story about uh, the barley harvest and being Israel. He comes up, God gives him something. So tell, tell us uh, a little bit about what you shared with me that day, and I put it in the book. When you said, wowzers. Wowzers, that is what I said. Wowzers, that's good. <laughs> yeah. So, and I, and I joke about it. I said, man, I wish I'd have got that. That's right. Because, you know, God doesn't give everybody everything. Amen. God gives different things to different people. Yeah. And that's why it's so important to mingle with people and get to know people and talk about ideas and principles and truths and because every, nobody gets it all. Everybody gets a little piece of the puzzle, mm -hmm. and you get together, and they fit, and they start fitting. So, so tell the, tell us, uh, tell the viewers here a little bit about what you told me that day. If you can, you can't sure. remember word for word, but yeah. tell them a little bit what you shared with me that day. Well, you you, you brought to my attention that 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 was a that was a type of Israel, mm -hmm. the twelve baskets and the twelve you know the twelve tribes, and if you keep reading that story, I was I was really loving that. After you you shared that with me, Gideon and all that, you know, yeah. being a representation of, of Israel, and I was studying that, and and the Lord showed me just to keep going and reading, and right after that, the next verses says Christ departed from them, and He told them gather up, so none are lost. The twelve baskets, so that each no, of them. they took all those baskets with them. Each disciple grabbed a basket, and the very next verse says. Christ departed and said, get in a boat and I'll meet you on the other, other side. side. Yeah. So where did the baskets go? In the boat. With the disciples. So they went and put them in the boat and Christ departed from them. They got in the boat and if you read it, it says in the midst of the journey or in the midst of Sea of Galilee. Yeah. There and we've been there. Oh, yeah. yeah. There, there are roads. So they're in the, they got in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. It's an exactly halfway across the journey, an exactly halfway point, there's a storm came up and they were about to die. Right? Because mm -hmm. Christ wasn't with them. Right. Then right there at the midst, it said Christ appeared, calmed the storm, and saved them. So in theory, that the, the journey is the seven years. The seven year tribulation. tribulation. In the middle is Jacob's trouble. Christ is not there the first half. No one gets saved. Right. At the very, in the midst. In the midst of the week. In the midst of the storm, in the midst of the journey, in the midst of the seven years, Christ appears. And saves. He appears to who? The Jews. That's right. The, the, the 12 baskets well, represent basket, the Israel. 144,000. That's when the 144,000 get saved right in the middle. That's when Christ appeared to them and saved them and the 12 baskets from perishing. Yeah, and that's Revelation 11. Uh, it says that when, when the two witnesses are sent back to heaven yes. in the sight of all the multitudes of the 140,000, yep. the Bible says that the remnant gave glory to the God of that's heaven. That's right, gave glory to I God. I believe that's the salvation of 144,000. 144, it's yeah. right at the middle of the tribulation. In yes. fact, it's on the Feast of First Fruits, yeah. just three days after Passover when, when the Antichrist enters the temple and yeah. all that happens. And, and uh, so. It's a great story. I mean, what, you, what you're saying is that the twelve bat, God takes the fish out at the, right well, at the beginning of the seven years. Sure. The fish are gone. He tells the, the Jews get the, the twelve baskets, the twelve tribes of Israel get. Yep. They start the journey of yes. the tribulation. They've got their temple and all that. They're halfway across, and Christ appears. That's right. And salvation comes to Israel. Jacob's trouble. There's Christ. And uh, yeah. by the way, their journey their journey's just begun there. Now they're going to be persecuted and they're going to be but they've, got Christ, but they've got Christ now. That's right. And everything changes right there at the middle for the whole world, really. But uh, great story. And I, and I put that paragraph in the book. It's at the end of a chapter. And I joke with Phil. I say I put your I put a little asterisk there and said see back of book for credit. <laughs> but I didn't. I just joke with him. I put his name. I, I you know thanks to my friend Phil Hauser for this that little paragraph that I wrote there. 
Um, I, I wrote it as best as I could remember how you explained that. But what a what a great story. What a great insight. Because um, you know you read in, you read the other gospels and you see another view of that it story. Is all of, that's the only story that all the gospels have. But there's different versions. Exactly. Of it. One of the versions man. shows that yeah. Jesus goes up on the mountain and he sees them in the boat. He watches them. Yeah. 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 And he sees. He waits till they're halfway across the yeah. into the in the storm. Yep. He's, his and, eyes yeah. always on them. And then all yeah. the, then he walks out there yeah. and uh, calms the storm and and, uh, uh, and of course there's Jacob's trouble. There's Matthew 24. Uh, woe unto hers with child in those days. Why? Because you can't run. It's hard to yeah. run. You got to run for your life. And uh, that's what Matthew 24 is about. It's right at the middle. The abomination of desolation takes place. And that's when the Antichrist breaks the treaty, declares war. He's going to kill every Jew. Yeah. That's what's been the goal since since Genesis 3 is that's to right. kill all the Jews. Got against but, evil, uh, yeah. Yeah, because if he can kill the Jews, he can keep prophecy from being fulfilled. But uh, anyway, that is in the chapter. Um, I think it's the chapter called uh, something about the feast. Let me see if I can find it here. That is in the chapter, oh, the harvest ticking clock. And at the end of that chapter is the little thing that, that I got from Brother Phil here. And uh, pictures, there's, over, there's like 25 full color pictures in the book. Most important book that I've ever written. And just wanted to come for a minute here and share with you what's going on with us. Uh, the book is out. Most important book that I have ever written, and I'm 100% convinced of that. Um, this book is going to be the most important book of 2019, and I'll be uh, I'll be going on crossing you soon, Southwest Radio, and other places. And uh, you out there, if you're a pastor or you have a, uh, a Bible study or you have a preacher that uh, you think would be interested in having us, uh, contact. Uh, Daniel at GodsFinalJubilee.com goes right to my phone and email. Uh, you can contact me through Facebook. You can contact me, you know, uh, my phone number is in the books. And um, I think it's on the website, but um, GodsFinalJubilee.com is the website. If you'd like to get in on the, on the Prosy Conferences, the tour that I'm going to be doing for the next year, uh, you need to act fast. You've got to get on the calendar. We've got to get this going. So, love to come to your church. Said, uh, if nothing else, just to present the books to your people. Um, or if you'd like me to do some PowerPoint presentations, preach, whatever, uh, love to do that. And uh, Brother Phil, a couple of last words uh, about the meeting, maybe to uh, maybe encourage the folks out there to maybe schedule one. Did you feel like the meeting was helpful to your people? The, the information that you give is more in-depth and, and more eye-opening than anybody that I've heard. I've been all around the world, brother, and the Lord's given you some things that I have never heard of before. And I get around, <laughs> you know? And it's just, it's it's from God. Well, it's I appreciate that. And I, and of course, I very humbly say, you know, it is it is God. It is. And it I'm, is. I'm just amazed at some of the things God has opened my eyes right. to. And Amen. I'm just, I'm just going through the doors that He opens, and, yeah. and I get stuff, I try to write it down, uh, I try to write it legibly. I try to write it on the bottom shelf because that's where I am. And uh, it just seems like God is, is, is getting it out there and, yeah. and wants to use this. So uh, so we'd love to come to your church. Uh, go to the website. Check out the book if you haven't already. And uh, you might want to order one. Or you might. Uh, we'd love to schedule something in your area to come and speak. So on that note, this is Dan Goodwin, God's Fine Jubilee Ministries. And we will... See you next time.